previously on Soda 360. Summit's on the air with the Ham Ninja. Okay, I can't do this anymore. I gotta come clean with you. You know what? You've been getting ripped off. So for the past year or more, you've only been seeing a part of soda. I haven't showed you the whole thing. I feel like you're kind of getting ripped off by me, maybe some of the other bloggers too. Hey, look, we're showing you maybe the most glamorous, maybe the most interesting part. Hiking, great views, um, getting on the radio, making contacts all over the world. But uh, you've been getting cheated out of how do we plan this stuff? So what is it? So I've decided to start a new series called Soda 360. I'm really excited to get this thing going because what I'll do is I'll go a little bit of an intro. What the heck is soda? Why do we do it, etc. Talk a little bit about prominence, what makes a soda peak. Some of the things that you've been missing on all these other videos, which is, you know, maybe like any other traveling video. So we'll talk specifically about summits on the air and ham radio in this episode in these episodes actually so we'll start off with a couple of uh videos on planning intro and planning uh then we'll talk about how to get there that's not too hard we got gps charts and some other things um we'll go through the setup of my station and how i do it uh spotting how i do that what the heck is spotting why do it and then maybe activate a peak definitely activate a peak um, we'll use sideband, hopefully uh, some CW, we'll chase some other guys on summits. And uh, so we'll do that, pack it all up, certainly want to get home safely. And then at the end, there's a little bit of paperwork to be done. How do we finish this thing off? So we'll talk a little bit about how I get the, my logs my, from my logging program uploaded to the SOTA website to get my points. Um, I downloaded it onto my computer and some other things. So we'll go over all those things. It's kind of more of a 360 look at soda rather than just that one little picture. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Welcome back. If you're just joining us at the Soda 360 video series, you might want to look at part one first. There's a link to it in the description below. In that first uh, part, I covered an intro on soda. What the heck is soda? Um, and why do it? And then we got into the first few steps in planning, uh, as you can see on the right. We talked about choosing a summit, how do we do that, the tools I use, um, how I check the weather, why do you want to do that. Talked a little bit about what to bring. Um, I covered some of the equipment that I bring and why. Uh, and we talked a little bit about safety as well. So in this video, uh, I'm going to start off by talking about what is prominence it's not anything that you really need to remember, but as we get into the charting applications, it might become interesting because it explains why some peaks are soda summits and others are not. So let's get going. I promised a, a quick view of prominence and what the heck is that. So for a summit to qualify for soda, it has to have at least 150 meters of prominence. The activation zone is within uh, 82 vertical feet of the summit, or 25 meters. Uh, you must have legal access to the summit. Um, obviously, you can't be going through private property or on private property, um, and your activity must not disturb the enjoyment of others. But what in the heck is this prominence thing? Well, so prominence of a peak is the height of a peak summit above the lowest contour of a line encircling it, but containing no other summit. <clears throat> so the best way to think of this is if you look at a topo map, um, you typically see the circles around the top of the mountain, and they continue to have circles around that peak until some point where it either adjoins another peak or hits the ocean. So let's take a look at the graphic here that I'm showing you right now. Um, there's, there's some that are summits and some that are not, a soda that qualify and some that don't. For example, here's one that's at uh, 330 meters high. Um, 
<clears throat> but you can see it's only sticking out 50 meters above this little valley below it. Uh, it's like a saddle between this peak and the peak to its right. I'm pointing to the peak that's in the middle here. Um, so that does not qualify. The one to the left and right do qualify. For example, the one on the left has a 200 meter uh, distance between the top of the summit and the little valley below it. So the little valley is at 100 meters, the summit is at 300, so it has 200 meters of prominence, whereas the other one only had 50 meters. This one over here, <clears throat> 500 meters high, um, and it's 500 above 300, excuse me, 280 meters. So that's uh, uh, 220 meters high, which certainly makes it it certainly qualifies for the 150 meters of prominence. So that's all prominence is. You don't have to remember any of this stuff, but you'll hear us talking about it as soda dudes. And uh, I just thought you ought to know what that is. And this is probably the best graphic to explain what the heck prominence is. Okay, now we're ready to uh, start looking at the charting program that I use to figure out how to get to the top of that summit. So we're going to go into alltrails.com uh, and I have an account there where I'm going to go in and uh, create a new chart on how to get to a particular summit. So let's get going. Alright, so the first thing I've decided is I want to go to Thomas Mountain. I brought up Soda um, Atlas and um, as you can see Thomas Mountain is right here. It's W6CT016. So let's click on that guy. Yep, that's Thomas Mountain. That's the one I want to go to. I'm going to middle click here. Give me a new tab. Because what I want is latitude and longitude. So let's take this. You remember in a previous video I said this is pretty important that we be able to get to this. So I'm going to jump over to All Trails now. And this is the opening screen that you'll get. Um, as you can see, I've logged in, so I'm going to go in here now, and I'm going to create a map. So there I go. I have a blank map, and I have the uh, All Trails overlay turned on right now. And here's what I'm going to create a waypoint, and I want to create uh, W6 slash CT-016. Mountain. I'm going to show the title. And I'm going to paste our latitude and longitude in there. So notice it has a negative 116. That means that uh, instead of uh, east and west, that's how they indicate it. So I want to make sure I don't forget that. Now we'll jump over to the longitude. And I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over here and put it in. Yep, I want to make sure it changes as well. I'm going to say this is the uh, uh, ham. Whoops. Activation zone. All right. So I'm going to save this guy. And if you'll watch the map, it's going to go out there and save this. Okay. There it is. Thomas Mountain. Um, I'm also going to save my map here and give it a name. Um, for the demo, I actually already have a Thomas Mountain, but I can change the name, etc. Here's our Thomas Mountain uh, marked on the chart right here. You can see the little yellow dot. So now I can zoom out of the, on the chart and see where I am. Okay, and if you remember, um, there is a road right over here. So I want to hike, um, but it looks like you can drive up this thing as well. So I'm actually going to chart both so you can see how that works. So let's go over here to the left-hand side and say draw a route. So the color it's chosen is red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually chart the uh, place where I'm going to park. Um, and I'll show you why we're going to do that in just a minute. So I'm going to click on this little red guy. Now. The next thing I want you to notice is there's two modes that this can run in. It can run in routing or drawing. So right now it's going to route 
for hiking and it's going to do that automatically. So if there's multiple trails that branch off, etc., I'll just click at different points in there and it's going to draw right onto that top of that trail for me. So one of the places I want to do that is I want to come up here um, and I'll keep actually just going so you can see that and you can see the little red and I'm gonna go over here and click on this and you'll see how it routes up to here and then it's going to basically go to um, our summit so you can see how it's routing us um, we can create an alternate route here really quick but uh, we're gonna do this and then we're gonna zoom in a little bit now we're practically in the activation zone here but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off um, now you'll notice it is still routing it looks like that must be a trail and we're gonna go all the way up to my little summit marker here um, that should be close enough and voila I'm done and it's gonna give me a distance on the left hand side so it's a five mile hike 5.39 miles uh, elevation gain of 2200 feet I've found that all trails is really accurate uh, when doing this of course I am comparing it to the the all trails our record mechanism which probably uses the same survey data but um, it's it's very accurate one of um, so here I need to click save here the reason why we're doing this um, is to basically have a plan to get out there and how are we going to get up to the top there's a couple of things that we can do here we can print this chart out um, uh, so that we can have it with us on the trail we can bring it up on the iPhone uh, mapping application which I'll show you next and download the charts for offline use before we leave the house um, so we have a plan the other reason why we do this especially when we're hiking is sometimes you can lose the trail or the trail becomes overgrown or um, you, you might find actually a little bit easier way to get up there so you kind of go around um, so it's it's a uh, a really kind of a backup mechanism obviously if, if the trail is really well marked you're never going to need to pull your phone out but if you get off trail um, this is certainly an easy way to get back on there are some trails that well there is no trail so for example um, the other mode of creating a route is let's say um, I'm just gonna make up a scenario here but I'm gonna draw another route I'm gonna make it green and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say drawing so uh, for example I know that I can get up to here but I need to find you know this is completely unpassable for whatever reason so I'm just gonna draw a point here and what I'll do is I'll follow this contour line over here and then I'll go up and all I'm doing is clicking on the mouse this is allowing me to draw I'm gonna hold this ship down and I can drag this thing around and I'll come around and I'll come up here so this allows us to do a couple of things is that auto routes which is really really cool um, we can draw routes by hand which I've had to do a lot when there are no trails and I'll show you an example of that um, and you can also have it route for you automatically so let me just cancel this one um, get rid of that one uh, I told you that this probably is a drive up which I've heard um, so if I go back here where is that road looks like the road is right here how do we get out to it looks like we can get out to it here so I'm gonna create a new route and I'm gonna make it oh, let's make it blue this time and I'm gonna go routing and I want to route for uh, well, bike touring I don't know but let's see if hiking works so here is my turn off um, then I want to come up here and uh, who's over here yep so it's it's drawing it for me um, really all I need to do is just find the end of the road which actually from what I understand goes almost all the way to the top which is uh, maybe light four-wheel drive um, so I'm gonna get up here to the top of this road um, 
and I think let me just see if I can click on this road see if it does yeah look at that so it found the road for me um, it's, I think it did uh, nope so it made a mistake and actually routed me onto so we're gonna go back here because that's not what I wanted it to do I'm gonna go back here to the road and uh, just whoops force it this down so yeah maybe we should just choose road biking uh, or excuse me scenic driving so maybe this will cause it to stick to the road which it looks like it will do um, and I'm gonna go do this and I know it follows a road around here and voila so now you have a road we can actually take I'm gonna take the shift key and just hold it down and drag this thing up we should be able to do that yeah so I can drag that up here um, the blue one that is nine miles so it looks like a nine mile drive I hear that this last part may require full four wheel drive so um, that's what I did is I went in and I said all right who else has been up here and it turns out uh, Adam K6ARK has been up there and uh, uh, he gave me a little bit of info so there we go um, I've created a couple routes I've showed you how to use um, auto routing and we can create some by hand um, let me jump over and I'll show you uh, a couple of more things here before we leave the map though I want to show you one more thing here's our Thomas Mountain map the one thing that I mentioned that we do want to um, record is where is the trailhead so that we can get there so there's two trailheads in this case one is you turn off a road here and one here what I do typically um, I'm gonna choose the trailhead in this case is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna bring up this little app here um, actually a, and I could start typing in here but you'll notice if I just put my cursor over that I can start typing on the left hand side without any issue so I'm gonna do that just to show you I can actually do it see I do that and now that I have typed that all in um, I want to type it in just as you see it including the comma the comma is really important because uh, other Google, otherwise Google Maps not gonna know what the heck you want to do so when we get ready to go we'll definitely want to use a program that I can bring up on my phone while I'm out and about and uh, what I use is Evernote um, you can use whatever it is you'd like um, as you can see I keep a a running log of all the summits that I go to so I can easily find a way back and, and cut and paste this and send it over to friends. So I put both of them in here. There's one for drive, there's one for hike. Um, now that I've, I've copied this, I'm going to go over to Google Maps. Uh, when I bring it up, I'm going to see this. I'm going to paste that latitude and longitude in there and voila. It dropped a pin right here and yep, um, Pine to Palms Highway. Let me go to satellite view and just see what this looks like. Hey, there it is. So yeah, that looks like, look, you can even see the trail uh, coming right off of that. So what I'm going to do is just see if, if Google will route to this and uh, most certainly will. Let me just switch back to, uh, to routing. And uh, it looks like it's a, a little, about a, two hours from my house. So there's a few different ways I can get there. But the big thing is, is now when I get in the car, I can cut, paste that into Google Maps on my phone, and now I can easily be routed. It's, it's pretty nice, especially when you're on mountain roads, um, so that you don't go flying past the turnoff uh, to the trailhead. So um, just wanted to make sure that we covered that because that's a crucial step in my planning, at least. Okay, I'm going to move on to just a couple other charting features you should look at, um, and I'll show you a couple examples here. So this is my saved version of Thomas Mountain. I'm going to go and bring up another one called Timber Top. So let me bring that up and I'm going to say, uh, just do a, there it is. There's my save chart. I did this a few years ago. Um, and what happened was I actually noticed if we do the map overlay, there's a road that leads around in here. So um, I could only see that not on all trails, um, but because uh, of satellite view. So you can take a satellite view and draw another road. Now it looked like actually the all trails now has it. They didn't have it before. 
Um, at least that's my excuse. So I could actually just draw a new route here and um, I'll just draw one by hand here and say, okay, hey, I'm going to bring this up here. There's, I'll just go down here and, oops, goes here. You can actually see the road. I don't know if you can see it well enough on the video. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw this guy. And it goes up to here. And I'll probably stop here. And then what I'll want to do is I'll just make a kind of a general course that goes around over here to get to my summit. Um, so I could follow this path as well. So although this wasn't the best example, um, what it shows is the ability to use additional information instead of just the default one, all trails. This is, this is why you pay for it. Um, and it's not that expensive, but I can do a map overlay. I can bring up a USGS. Now, typically, you won't see a lot of the um, trails and what have you are not on the USGS map. Um, that's interesting. It's not loading. Let me see if I can US topo. So the USGS uh, maps typically are better than this. I don't know why there's a big blank space. But it will be missing a lot of the things that you get on the all trails maps. But at times, if you're struggling to find a path, Go ahead and try the US uh, GS topos because sometimes they will show old logging roads uh, and trails, uh, Jeep trails, uh, that are not on the all trails maps. Also, go ahead and use the satellite overview and see if you can't find a path that way. I've done this before and I found routes, uh, roads that were not charted, uh, that allowed me to get into an area uh, a little bit easier and uh, safer. Uh, you can also do an overlay. There are some U.S. contours you can put over it, uh, etc. But um, you could combine, for instance, the satellite view and then throw on a contour map on top of it. Uh, sometimes this can be helpful. Um, a lot of times it's really confusing. So we'll uh, turn that off and we'll go back to the all trails. So how did I actually do this one? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to go to um, History recordings. I'm going to leave this one. I'm not going to store it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring up timber top. I've got a couple of recordings in there. Just let me show you the last way that I did it. Um, if you remember, I said there was a road. I actually parked uh, my dad's, I don't know, was it 97 Nissan pickup that just won't die. That thing is awesome. Little four-wheel drive. Put it right here. Uh, next to the road and then hiked up. You can see that I hiked up this way um, and then came back down this way. Um, that was a little bit better uh, than going directly up uh, this hill here. It had, you know, when you, when you get boots on the ground, a lot of times you'll find uh, the terrain is a little bit different than the charts. Also, the vegetation uh, can play a really big factor. So there was some really thick vegetation in here and and uh, this is my second recording. I actually knew that, so I knew to kind of go down here and swing up this side here. Um, so that's an example of how to use a few more charting features as well as recordings. When you come back, you can share this with friends, obviously, but when you come back, you can bring up an old recording that you made, uh, bring it up on your phone before you leave, and then download the charts for that, and say, you know, load this into the recorder, into a new recording and that will allow you to uh, basically follow the same path if you if you found a really killer trail so that's uh, additional charting and recording this is the opening page that i see when i go to all trails um, what i can do is bring up trails that i have um, already stored on my pc so let's bring up the one from yesterday i'm just going to bring up a plan here and i'm going to type in twin so there's Twin Peaks. I'm going to bring this one up. Um, that was probably created out of a recording that I had done before. And actually I went up, I went it this way and then around to the left and I came back the same way. I kind of like that hike. Um, it's a little bit easier and I was able to crank right off there and get over to Costco and run out of their errands for the day. So one of the things that um, you can, you need to do before you leave the house while you still have internet connection is download maps for offline use. 
That way, if you don't have cell service, you can bring the maps up and still get around without any issue. Um, as you can see, I've already downloaded the one for all trails. I could download one for a satellite view. And I generally bring down uh, all trails, satellite, and USGS. That way I have all the information I could possibly need when using all trails on the road. Okay. Um, the other thing that um, I use it quite a bit for is I can bring up previous recordings. Um, so just let me get rid of this here. And if we go down to, sorry, we'll go down to um, history. This is a history of all my recordings. Um, I can go to record and just record the current hike that I'm getting ready to go on. Um, and then, of course, there's exploring, looking for other trails that either people have recorded and published or published trails um, that people may have created or are actually published as more of a, a formal organization. For instance, a lot of state parks are already out there. You don't need to create your own chart. You can bring it up and then say create a map from that. But I typically do all my charting um, planning from home and then I just download the chart here. The one thing that you can't do um, that I found easily is, is to actually create a chart on the iPhone. Um, but the really, really cool thing about this is you can share um, any of your recordings or charts with other people. So if a friend of mine is going up to Sheephead, which is really hard to get to if you don't have a chart and there's nothing published, um, I can give him my all trails. I also bring up a chart and send it. There's a share feature that I send it to my wife and a search and rescue guy that I know, so they know where I'm going for the day. So that's the other thing. If you stick to your chart here and you uh, report in late or not reporting, um, they have a pretty good idea of where you were headed and how you're going to get there. So that's all I'm going to cover for charting right now. Uh, I didn't want to turn it into an all trails course, but certainly important when we talk about uh, choosing the hiking path and uh, just as important on how to get to the trailhead itself. So we've gone through choosing a summit, checking the weather, what to bring, and of course what you bring depends on your mission. If you're going uh, to be spending the night uh, doing a little camping, then of course that'll include some tent and other things. So you're all ready to go. Now what? Okay, let's jump on to the next section, which is just a quick word about uh, uh, dangers of hiking. It can be dangerous. Um, We'll cover a little bit more in the 10 Essentials about mitigating risk, um, but this is just kind of a, a word of caution. Unfortunately, the woman to the right, the bikini hiker, uh, froze to death on a mountain. She, uh, she got hurt, and um, they weren't able to get to her in time, unfortunately. Uh, but it just serves as a, a very strong pointed message to think about what you're doing and plan. Um, this goes over some of the things I've already uh, gone over, but one of them is stay within your personal personal abilities. Um, there have been hikes that I've had to turn around and uh, uh, abort because the hike ahead exceeded my, my capabilities. And uh, maybe I'll try it again on the other side of the mountain, but uh, with lightning moving in, it didn't make sense for me to continue on. So um, keep that in mind. We all uh, operate at different levels. Um, I certainly don't take on a whole lot of risks just because of my personal uh, abilities. Uh, I don't include rock climbing and some other things. So certainly not with 30 pounds on your back. And that's another thing to think about if you're getting into a sketchy area. Remember, you're not going to be as steady as you are uh, used to because you do have a little bit of extra wake uh, hanging around on your back. We talked about uh, preparing layers, etc. Um, another item here is uh, tell others where you're going. I email my all trails route to my wife and a SAR guy that I know, search and rescue guy. Um, and of course I have the SAT tracker, so this is mitigating some of the risk. Um, the other thing I highly recommend is get out and practice with your equipment. Now this is about doing soda, and soda includes hiking. So it's necessary that we talk about um, hiking and a lot of the planning, etc., is all about hiking and getting there. And that is, to me, a lot of the fun is the hiking part. So um, we'll spend some time on that. Um, I mentioned the 10 essentials and the first aid kit. So let's talk about that for just a second. Go to the website, do a search for hiking 10 essentials or camping 10 essentials, etc., and build your own list. 
this is mine I'm not an expert but let's run through these really quick and because all of these are about mitigating risk um, another way to mitigate risk is to hike with someone else um, you can mitigate the risk further by telling the uh, medical team where you're going and to have a medical evacuation helicopter on standby uh, with a full medical team uh, it's it's how far do you want to go so you can hike by yourself and or you can hike with a, an entire medical team it's all about the risk that you want to take on and then look at ways to mitigate that risk so let's talk about that really quick um, the 10 essentials I carry um, certainly number one is is being able to navigate and communicate uh, headlamp if you get stuck overnight I've also uh, descended or come off mountains at night certainly want to have that if you get stuck up there um, some protection first aid including foot we'll talk more about that uh, moldy tool um, it's gonna weigh you down a lot of guys don't like carrying you know any tools I've used mine a lot to fix gear on top of the mountain um, fire but just a word of caution here please 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 do not start a fire unless you feel it's the only way it's gonna save your life um, if you do get into a situation where you think you're gonna freeze to death by all means do what it takes to survive um, the reason why I say that is I have hiked a lot through um, hundreds of square miles of areas that have been completely burned out because people haven't been able to contain their fire um, so let's move on shelter I have an emergency bivy in there which basically looks like a big bag that's made out of the space blanket stuff it's gonna help me stay a little bit warmer if I have to uh, stay overnight for whatever reason extra food and water um, the big reason here is again I plan as if I might have to spend the night secondly um, um, you might run into someone else that needs help and this is 99% of the time for me is I'll run into somebody who went up a mountain with just a sports bottle and they're really suffering so um, you can always help someone else um, either you or somebody on your team extra clothes we talked about multiple layers um, one I have at least one in the summer and multiple in the winter uh, finally to medical kit um, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate and then I would add on to that some training so for me I've had a little bit of training I was a uh, trained medic uh, army medic um, I have an EMT certificate from a long time ago um, I've had multiple first aid courses but uh, the message here is go out get some training um, if you don't have any learn how to use the medical gear that you're going to carry with you um, there's all kinds of first aid courses that you can take wilderness first aid from REI and some other other sporting goods places generally have those are easy to find and highly recommend you do that um, I carry this little ultra lightweight medical kit in the upper right hand corner and I feel um, and this is my opinion by the way that 99% of the issues you're going to have is stop the bleeding so just to give you an example um, I was on a mountaintop in New Mexico and I set up my counterpoise and took one of those little I was stepping backwards did one of those little funky trip things where you sit down and unfortunately where I came down on a log with a small uh, branch sticking out so and impaled myself in the back of the leg so um, after I stopped the groaning <laughs> I scrambled up to the medical kit and um, you know took a look back at my leg and there's some fat poking out so I was like okay that's not supposed to do that it was also kind of leaking some red stuff so uh, pulled some gauze out slapped that on there um, ran tape around it to kind of get the, ble uh, the bleeding stopped waited um, sat down uh, once the bleeding had stopped I did have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D if the bleeding did not stop um, so I have been trained have a plan uh, the most important part you need to save yourself that's number one is get trained to be able to save yourself number two get some training so that you knew you know what that plan B and plan C and maybe plan D is for you um, and uh, you don't need anything 
super fancy. This medical kit that you're looking at is band-aids and some gauze strips and some tape and I think there's some aspirin and stuff in there. So it, it is not fancy in the least. All you got to do is stop the bleeding. Um, hopefully it's only one small catastrophe per hiking trip. So <laughs> you only need to carry enough hopefully for one event. Um, you'll need to save yourself or possibly someone else, someone else on your teams you're hiking with. Um, you can be there to give them give them a hand uh, should they do something stupid like that or I generally end up all sliced up coming through brush and stuff sometimes. So um, that's the the hiking 10 essentials. Um, certainly build your own. Um, this is just my set. Again, you can go out to hamninja.com and click on the um, equipment loadout to kind of get a better idea of the things that I carry. Secondly, um, or lastly, I should say, you can go to Ham Ninja slash presentation to get to a presentation on this, but more importantly, safety. And if you go to hamninja.com slash safety, um, you'll see kind of a little bit more detail on my recommendations um, on a little bit of safety. Talk a little bit more in depth about food and water and the ability to communicate and clothing, etc. So um, I use all of these things to mitigate risk. I do not eliminate risk, but if I tried to eliminate risk, I'd probably get to the point where I would not leave my house, except they say most accidents happen in the house, so now I don't know what to do. Anyway, go out, have fun, and let's move on. One final note. Um, that deer and her two babies I came across uh, as I headed out to one of my soda expeditions in Arizona. That was really a great day. Um, so that wraps up um, the part two of the Soda 360 series. Um, if you stayed this long, thank you very much. And uh, if you want to find out when the next episode comes out, uh, click on the subscribe and you'll get a notification if you click on that little bell thing. So. Uh, I hope this has been useful and uh, look forward to the next installment where we will go, be going out and doing an actual activation of a mountain and then uh, wrapping some things up here in, uh, in, uh, in the last episode. So until next time, 73.